Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and we've got a new installment of This Week in EDM. <laughs> oh, that was not planned, but I was going to say I am sick, but it's been too long since I put one out because we're talking about the last two weeks in EDM. I thought about doing two weeks uh, continuously, but no, I think I'm just going to go back to doing one uh, just every 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 week. But uh, So bear with me while I'm sick as we hop into This Week in EDM. Remember, the Spotify playlist is down below. Of all the songs linked there. Uh, but we're starting off in the trash category. Songs that I think are just straight up trash. Um, we've got Dylan Francis, Good Times Ahead, and Valentino Khan with Humo. The Pero like EP is out now. And um, I mean, what even is this project? This track is per in this track in particular is like 2015 Mubaton without any knowledge of what makes the genre successful in today's age. So uh, yeah, it's not a great track. As we're moving into the bad category, songs that I thought were uh, were not great. Just remember, this is my own opinion, so don't take it with a, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, we've got Zoo, Eye of the Tiger from The Tiger's Apprentice. Uh, this is a cover of the Eye of the Tiger for an animated, a new animated Eye of the Tiger universe thing. I don't know what it is exactly, but all that aside, it's not a great track. There's some odd production choices uh, and sounds and all that aside. It just sounds like Zoo is at a karaoke bar on a Friday night and singing Eye of the Tiger after he had never heard the original. It just, his singing does not sound great on this one. Um, I'm sorry. But. And then we got Bear Grylls with Happy and You Know It. Uh, <laughs> just, this is just a weird gimmicky track. Um, it's meant to be played at the festivals. It's it's just a gimmick. And it doesn't really have that much of a great production to back it up anyways. But uh, yeah, if you're happy and you know it, break your neck. Really? Uh, then we got Sudden Death and Bajalvin with uh, Teeth. I'm sure I butchered that other name, but uh, yeah, the Harbinger EP is out now. Uh, holistically, I thought the EP was pretty solid, not too bad, uh, but this track in particular was not on my good side. Uh, too much noise for just the sake of being loud, and this is this is Sudden Death at his worst, personally. They're moving into, uh, nope, still in the bad, bad category. We've got the Riot 10 Decimate and High, high Hero the... <laughs> Hyro the Hero, my goodness, my brain is mush, uh, with Ballistic from the Hyper Die Ballistic EP. Didn't love this EP, uh, and in fact, I thought it was overall pretty poor, and I thought this track was exactly why. Um, it's just like your most vanilla rhythm, but just with nonsensical vocals thrown on top, and uh, I wasn't a fan. We got Vice Tone with Dirty Desire. Uh, I feel like I'm done covering Vice Tone nowadays. Um, it's just all the same, very commercial friendly, super simple, boring tracks. Um, this one's trying to go for like a sexy house style, but that synth lead is anything but sexy. Uh, and then we've got Kygo and Ava Max with Whatever. Um, and it was Kygo, the one that starts off 2024 with the big pop remix, um, this time being a cover of Shakira's Whenever, Whenever, or Wherever, Whenever. But uh, this time it's whatever, just the other kind of trio of those. But um, yeah, in a vacuum, the song is just mid, but considering it's a ripoff of an already popular tune, I just can't put it in meh. Speaking of meh, we're moving into the meh category, songs that I thought were not too bad. Maybe you'll like them more than me. Uh, we've got Affinity and Concrete Castles with Without Me. Uh, this just feels like the same track that Affinity has produced the last couple times, in my humble opinion. It just is the same thing over and over again, and I want something different. We've got Inhuman and Quiet with Death Funk, uh, quick and in-your-face brooding dubstep with a creepy whispered vocals. Um, not my charm, but I'm sure some of you will absolutely love this. We got Tiesto, Rudimental, and Absolutely with Water Slides. Uh, pretty serviceable, big commercial hit. Didn't really hate it, but really had nothing great to say about it either that really made it stand out, so it's just here in May. We got Rez and Holly with Dysphoria, a new single from an upcoming Rez LP, and um, I... I'm glad to see that she's moving back to a more like explicitly mid-tempo style. I think it suits her her production best, Res particularly. But um, otherwise, this is just a kind of standard Res track with deep hits and a layer of kind of just black covering the whole production um, to make it nice and dark. But uh, yeah, I'm not the hugest fan. I've got Fairlane and Silverstein with Take It Back. I've never been a fan of the real like rock-infused EDM. I think there's a delicate dance you have to do with it. And uh, this one just didn't land for me. Um, but if it landed for you, I'd love to know why in that comment section below. So let me know why. Uh, this one I did not think worked well. Uh, but not horrible. That's why it's just meh. We got Retrovision with Take Me Higher, uh, uplifting and simple bass house track that's uh, great to kind of get you going and keep the energy high. Um, otherwise, it was maybe a, a touch too simple for me uh, to be anywhere other than meh. 
We got Subtronics and Grabbits with Insidious. A uh, bit of an odd track with real, with no real like sonic structure to it. Uh, felt like it was trying to be one thing and then another thing the next minute. And Grabbits vocals didn't really match with the tone of the production. Um, yeah, even though I'm a sucker for Grabbits' vocals, this one just did not work for me. We got Zed's Dead and Reaper with Back Bus. Uh, heavy hitting DNB here, almost drum step uh, of a track. That is just a wall of sound as much as you can be in DNB. Uh, got some of those like kind of Rastafarian style vocals throughout that kind of adds to its charm. But otherwise, I was actually pretty underwhelmed with this collab uh, that I was pretty much all for on paper. I thought Zed's Dead and Reaper would have been fantastic together, but uh, I just thought it was meh. Then we got Steve Angelo with me, uh, well produced, but it's just kind of more by the numbers commercial track uh, that uh, just didn't quite have any X factor to it. Just a kind of standard commercial house, and that's that. We got Turquoise Death with Never Be the Same, a very fascinating track here. Um, quite underground sounding, leaning far into that kind of IDM territory. But uh, the whole track is also just one big movement with little to no structural ebb and flows. And so it was just a bit too out there for my liking, I think. This is very much like a critic style song, and I just wasn't a fan of this one as much as I could have been. Then we're moving into the good category. We've got 23 songs in good from the last two weeks. We've got Eula Yesterday. Uh, other than the fact that this sounds like 90% of Eula's other tunes uh, in a vacuum, this is a good cut with a nice kind of ethereal progressive house style to it. Then we got Company and Kyrot... Kyrocher? Kai Kreicher? Oh man, I butchered that. Surge. Uh, but this song goes ballistic. Uh, it's more or less a standard company drum step track, but um, it's got some neat flares to it that I think uh, it separates this from other tracks in company's discography, particularly. We've got Lucid with El Universo. Uh, really unique here from Lucid uh, with that kind of breaks a lot of the conventional rules of production while still keeping the track fairly approachable for a commercial audience. Uh, it's one that just like is all over the place uh, sonically, but just kind of, it kind of works and I enjoyed it. We got James Landino with Desert Gamer. Um, yeah, this track fits perfectly with the new Chompo season two. It's punchy, it's high octane, it's relentless in its energy uh, and really enjoyed the synth melody on this track as well. Then we've got the, tight, the Kite String Tangle with Give the Chance, the Elenium 2014 remix. Um, Elenium has been releasing a bunch of these really like old remixes. I don't know why. I think there was like five or six of them, maybe even less than that. But um, hey, this is better than a majority of the tracks that he produces nowadays. Uh, generally, this this is really solidified that I was like, yes, the early Elenium was, was, is best. Was best and is best. Um, but yeah, great earlier remix that I'm glad is released now. Then we got Skylar with Never Enough. Uh, Ophelia Presents Advent Volume 8 is out now, and this is the track I wanted to highlight from that. Um, I just feel like Skylar doesn't miss. Uh, her track production is always consistent, albeit a little same samey with track to track, but um, I really enjoyed it. Then we got Kirby featuring Sarah DeWarren with Kill the Lights. Um, not the most out there track, but the melody is simple and definitely an earworm. Uh, Sarah's vocals are calming and work in tandem really well with the tone of the track that Kirby produced. We got Elohim with Can't Remember Your Name, a uh, carefree, steadfast track from Elohim here uh, with this new one, and it's very vocal focused with its production, primarily playing a supporting role that production, uh, where it's, uh, yeah, it's very storytelling and very narratively driven, I would say, with this track. Then we got Imanu, It's Our Destiny, essentially the VIP here. Um, this is what I expected the original to be, uh, in all honesty. Imanu's kind of bread and butter D&B style, not the kind of more flary future base, kind of weird, out there, wonky style that the original ended up being. But um, I'm happy we got to hear this version, a D&B version, but the original is just, it's just much better. Then we got Haywire Chromatically, uh, which I'm saying it like the way that he says it in the song. Uh, solid stuff from Haywire, but I gotta be honest, this is... Probably his weakest song in a long time and his weakest on Monster Cat, I think for sure. Um, there isn't anything wrong with the track and I, I think it's good. It's just basic and a little boring for Haywire standards, I, I must say. Um, like this compared to White Lies, White Lies is just or White Lies is just way more flashing out there. Um, so good song, but uh, just not crazy about it. And we got Jewels featuring 24 Hours with Stax, the Jewels and Tasaki remix. Another one of those tracks that I'm just... Glad to hear a different approach to, uh, but the original is just better. So, liked it. Original is better. They got Risen featuring Shallow with Burnin, a beautiful progressive house track with a uh, great length and long extended movements. I think, um, yeah, this one is just one of those atmospheric ones where you kind of just sit in and soak, and I uh, really enjoyed it for that. 
then we've got Scro and Underbelly with I Guess I'm Alone. A uh, much needed collab from these two kind of Bitbird mainstays nowadays, despite this being an off label release. But uh, yeah, this is a kind of perfect indie sounding electronica and. Um, I, I will say I should have expected the last final movement, the final drop, but I didn't. I should have expected it, but I didn't. Um, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but just go listen to the track all the way through, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Then we got Drinks and Me and Badger with Don't Leave. Uh, this is just pure garage bliss here. I really enjoyed the kind of disco vibes with those kind of bright, shining synth twinkles all throughout. Um, just a solid cut all around. We got Chime and Convexity with Liminal, a super punchy color base that relies a lot more on the low end than the kind of melodic high end that is kind of known for in the color base scene right now, which is a nice mix-up. And also, I love seeing Convexity on Monster Cat. Uh, just a solid track all around. We got Justice and Tame Impala with One Night All Night. Justice is back, baby. And uh, this isn't the most explosive track, uh, but my goodness, Electro House is so in right now. Um, love Tame Impala's vocals on this and uh, how it kind of calls back to kind of Justice's woman LP with the uh, vocals there in this in the storyline there. But yeah, enjoy this one. Then we got a Cloudy Sky with Team. Uh, not a very kind of EDM track, I would say, uh, but Cloudy Sky or a Cloudy Sky does to produce a lot of that realm, and I think a lot of you guys will enjoy this, but uh, yeah, this is a more acoustic and kind of somber approach to a track. Um, pretty sad lyricism here, and honestly, the narrative here, it's pretty much like the, uh, in the end, nothing really matters, so we we can't really change anything, so just whatever kind of mentality, and I'm sure it aligns with uh, a Cloudy Sky's current mental state, but um, yeah, a brief glimpse into his his life right now, I guess, but... Uh -uh. And we got Dirty Phonics with Right Here, Right Now. Uh, in an odd twist of fate, uh, this didn't end up being a Flat Boy or Fat Boy Slim cover. I thought it was going to be. Uh, that being said, I thought this was really solid for Dirty Phonics. They didn't quite go as hard as they normally do stylistically, but I think it was a great approach um, to be a little bit more pulled back and a little bit more uh, melodic in the style of DNB that they produced here. So I liked it quite a bit. We got Camouflage with I'm Hurtin', also known as Deja Vu. Uh, jumpy house tune with a blending of garage sounds throughout here. Uh, one of the more simplistic Camouflage tracks, but I think it worked really well for him. And we got Mr. Bill, Dirt Monkey, and Elica with Bones. Love seeing Mr. Bill take the reins on a Monster Cat release here, being the like primary producer of a track. Um, great halftime just style with it with lots going on especially love the vinyl scratches in the back as the outro um i think this will for sure land on monster cats best of 2024 um it will for me i'm i'm pretty certain but i'm sure it will for uh, the general audience as well then we got kaiwachi and trella with glow in the dark um kaiwachi really showing his range with this track uh in such a kind of um weird turn for him it's like purely melodic track where it's like a it's really not dubstep it's pretty much just melodica um trella's vocals really bring the whole thing together as well too to kind of add that more um bright style to the tone of the track and uh, i really enjoyed it then we got skybreak and danny demand with the epic octopus song uh, super fun and engaging, well-rounded track with tons of memes interspliced all throughout. Um, this one was just a blast to listen to uh, time and time again. This one has really grown on me a lot even more. Uh, and then we got Nero, Blame You, really solid drum and bass from Nero here. And if this is what we're going to get with some upcoming LP or whatever it is, I'm ecstatic about that. Um, it's really high quality. The production value is really there. And um, I think this is just uh, Nero coming back into form. I don't think this is as good as some of their earlier stuff, but this is still really, really solid. And our last track of the week is in standout, actually, the first standout of the year 2024. And I'm giving it to On Planets, uh, the beach at the base of the hill. Um, this is another one of those tracks that's not really explicitly EDM, um, but damn, I keep going back to this track over and over again. It is just beautiful. It's got that kind of auto-tune stylization that uh, is actually pretty common with Kanye uh, in the My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy era of his, um, but with a kind of soft, tender heartedness that comes with an On Planets track and his production. So uh, this is just a beautiful melody of styles and sounds and uh, a more intimate approach to a track from on, on planets that's not as much electronic focus than we've heard from him so oh yeah but that has been this week in edm with mr sicko here uh thank you for <laughs> uh being along for the ride but other than that i'm dakota from Bowtie media and i'll see you guys in another video